You're listening to a message from Redbud Student Ministry. Redbud Student Ministry is part of Redbud Baptist Church, which is located at 801 Slide Road. Youth group meets Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Hope to see you there. Yeah, you guys probably have seen these all over the place. No matter where you go, Walmart. Um, well, you probably can't hear me right now. So let's go ahead and remove it. And if you guys have been to Walmart or uh, United Grocery Store or some other places, uh, you see masks all over the place. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today is masks. But first of all, I just want to say um, I miss you guys. I haven't seen you in a little while. Um... We'll get back together soon, and uh, that's going to be exciting. I also want to let you know that, hey, you know, I'm going to be contacting you guys a little bit, and uh, we're going to play a tournament. It's going to be a rock, paper, scissors tournament. It's going to be virtual, so wait for a text or maybe a phone call or maybe over Messenger, and when it's your turn to play against someone else, uh, I'll let you know, and we'll go ahead and keep posting on Facebook on the Red Blood Student Ministry page. What the tournament's looking like and who's winning and you can go out there and check from time to time so that's pretty awesome uh also i just want to say that um i'm glad you guys are still tuning in and being part of this um we'll get back together we'll get ready for camp and that's another thing uh, camp has now moved uh because of the coronavirus stuff we're going to have camp july 5th through july 8th so that's going to be like the sunday through the wednesday and come back home late Wednesday night. But uh, we'll get everything arranged. We'll get everything put together. Um, and uh, we'll get to camp. So, with nothing else said, I want to do a little quick message here with you. And we're going to talk about masks, of all things. I know we all put on different masks at different times. Um, adults, students, it really doesn't matter. People will put up masks. They act a certain way to certain people. And... Um, I had a mask when I was growing up as a kid because, you know, I was, um, I was chubby, as they said back then, and uh, people would tease me about being chubby. So, I was chubby, and uh, people would tease and didn't realize how much it hurt, and I'd pretend like, you know, that doesn't hurt, that doesn't hurt at all. No, I mean, you know, yeah, go ahead, I'll laugh with you, and, and then, you know, when I get home, I knew it would hurt. And you guys may be walking through part of that right now. But we all have masks. We'll put masks off at certain times. So let's talk about that first one. The I'm fine mask. I'm just so fine. I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. Everything's okay. Um, I'll let you know this. Hiding behind that mask doesn't help. But um, you can find freedom if you surrender it. If we read in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says here, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So, um, we have to realize that we're not always fine. We're not always fine. And, and we need the help of God working in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Um, I realize you could be vulnerable during that time, but we need to be. Once I understood that I wasn't fine and started depending on God, then I was, the hurt started healing. I could love those people that were teasing me before, and, and what was going on inside me was more than just me and and I wasn't worried about what people said about me anymore um, it didn't matter because I had my Heavenly Father who loved me and uh, he loved me just the way I was um, so I know it could be scary if we start talking to someone um, that we trust about all the things that are going on in our lives but you need to do that uh, there might be someone in your youth group one of your youth leaders that you can talk about and talk to them about um, that you're really not fine and uh, they can help you uh, we can also start working with each other as a youth group um, hold each other accountable help each other confess with each other 
and uh, most of all, lift each other up. Once I started realizing there was people around me that, that needed love, that needed help, it wasn't just me, then together we, we grew and together we got stronger. So look around to those around you. There's others that need healed and, and you can be a part of their healing. You guys can get stronger together. But make sure, you know, that there's someone growing to Christ as well because, uh, you know, I have found wrong people to be friends with and somehow they got me in trouble. So try to find those good friends. Um, I always want to know um, who's your favorite character in Monsters, Inc.? Who's your favorite character? You probably say Mikey or something like that. But not many people are going to say Randall. That chameleon because he always changed and that's what we're talking about we don't want to be changing our face all the time changing our mask all the time basically we're changing things in our, our mind and our heart all the time to match what we think people should uh, or what we want people to, to think about us so you know it's hard to trust because it's always changing so we don't want to be like Rando. We don't want to have that chameleon mask, okay? Um, I realize we all want to be liked in some way or another. And if you if you're one of those ones that sit there and say, "Well, no, I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody," well, really, you're you're just saying, "I'm fine. I'm fine." But really, you're probably not at that point. So, in Matthew chapter 23, verses 27 through 28, it says, "What sorrow." awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees hypocrites for you are whitewashed tombs beautiful on the outside but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity outward you look like religious people but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness so the Pharisees acted like religious people but really didn't have a love for Christ who was among them at that time going through the rituals and 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 trying to get everybody to do all the rules because they loved the rules but yet in their heart they weren't following Christ they weren't following God before Christ arrived they were just following these rituals so that's where we find ourselves you know and the sad truth is we're all hypocrites in some form or fashion or some degree or more. We're all hypocrites. And um, it seems like if we try to work harder at trying to quit that, we actually end up getting worse. So um, what you have to do is you start, have to start looking at God because we're all made in the image of God. And if we start looking at God and following his lead in our lives, not only do we have Christ to look to, and I realize we can't all be perfect in that way, but that's what we're striving for. But we're, we need to be listening to what God's telling us to do. We need to stop doing what we want to do and start following what he's telling us to do. Um, pleasing people is pointless. Pleasing God is it's where the power comes from, where your strength's going to come from. So we, we, we don't need to have that pleasing people mask on. You know, I have this different mask when I'm in front of these friends. I have this different, different mask when I have when I'm in front of this teacher. Or I have a different mask on when I'm in front of my parents. And I have a different mask on when I'm at church. And I have a different mask on. The only mask you need to have on is none. You need to be following God in your life. And that's where power will be coming from. Let's talk about one more mask. That's that labels mask. Um, have you ever felt labeled? Obviously, you know, I was labeled as fat. And that wasn't P-H-A-T, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was fat. And people laid, labeled me as that, and I still am. But um, you may have other labels on you. Loser. Uh, quitter. I don't know. There's some people label you as a smart aleck, or maybe label you label you as a nerd or a genius, or you just a teacher's pet. On and on and on and on and on. 
they're trying to you know define your identity identity for you they try to define your identity for you and guys like i said your identity comes through christ that's your identity don't let them define your identity um let's look at ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 11 it says but as i looked at everything i had worked so hard to accomplish it was all so meaningless like chasing the wind there was nothing really worthwhile anywhere solomon who was considered one of the wisest men one of the wisest men on earth is talking here and he looked at everything he was trying to find ways to i don't know get better maybe or get fulfilled and he goes all the way around trying every little thing and every big thing to find at the end when he came back that God was right there all along and the only way he was going to be fulfilled and happy was following God that's what we need to look at in ourselves really the only way we're going to be happy is following God so you got to look inside yourself and start saying why am I letting these people label me and letting that bother me? Why am I putting on all of these different masks and I can't make up my mind which mask I want to wear in front of which person? Why am I always telling people I'm fine when I'm really not? And why am I not talking to others about that? Not to have them um, listen to me just because I want more people listening to me. To help encourage me though and help move me forward following God only God gets to say who we are only God gets to say who we are and that's it you guys heard of the Chronicles of Narnia um, everybody's heard of that and you've seen it on the movies but there's one of the books that's called the horse and his boy and um, basically he uh, this boy is an orphan and and he runs away from from his uh i guess his parent at that time and, and uh was game beaten you know he basically was a servant boy so he was an orphan servant boy and his master was was mean okay and he runs away and he ends up with a horse and the horse could talk okay throughout the whole story shasta is the name of the boy by the way he sees everything about himself as just an orphan servant boy with no home and no purpose. Uh, in the end, he actually find out he, you know, when he starts working for a king, he finds out he's the king's son and he's actually a prince. So hopefully I didn't spoil that book for you. But um, basically he was kidnapped as a kid from the king and that's how he got to become an orphan servant boy. But really he wasn't an orphan servant boy. The whole time he was a prince, but he was living with that mask. So he was truly not himself until he removed that mask and realized who he truly was on the inside. You too are a prince or a princess. Uh, you're a child of, of the king. The creator God who created this world knows how it works best and knows how you work best. He is both a good king a loving father and he wants everything in your life you don't have to search for your identity anymore you don't have to keep switching from these masks you don't have to listen to all these people that are telling you who they think you are because your father knows who you are if your father God is going to talk to you right now he, he'll be saying things like I'm with you I was with you from the beginning I seen you when you're alone and crying in your room. I seen you when you're on the top of that mountaintop and everything's going great and you were successful at something and you're excited. I seen you when you lost that friend. I seen you when you're mad. And I seen you when you're down. And I loved you through the whole time. I love you right now. So God, he's, that's what he would say to you. You may be listening to this message right now and not even realize who I'm talking about. 
But God sent his son, Jesus, on earth to die on the cross for your sin. He did that because he loved you. If you have never trusted Christ as your Savior, then we need to get that settled right now. Because to understand his identity, you need to understand him. And to be able to understand him, you have to have Christ as your Savior. So it goes something like this. Just pray with me if you want to do this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you. Thank you for your Son who died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I repent of my sins right now. And I trust Christ as my Savior in my heart. And I proclaim boldly that he is my Lord of my life. And I will trust him from this point on. For it's Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And guys, if you did that for the first time and truly believe, you are now a child of God. And that's the most exciting thing in the world. And we can start working on your identity now. And all those masks can be removed. And we can start encouraging each other, lifting each other. Lifting each other up. Love you all. Miss all of you. I really miss all you. But keep your heads up. We'll get back together soon. Get out in the sun like I am right now. Get some of that, uh, that good sunlight on you. Walk around a little bit. Breathe some nice air. Don't stay cooped up. Get your lessons done. Finish this all up. You guys are graduating. We're going to celebrate that during the summer. And that's going to be fun. And So let's uh, start holding in there. Pray daily. Get into the Word when you can. Open up that scripture and start reading some. Again, if you need a Bible, I can, I can get one to you. <laughs> so, love you guys. Uh, Jennifer loves you. Holly loves you. Um, Doorknob loves you. All the people that work with you, me nee and Charlie and everybody. And, and of course, Terry and, and Kathy love. They all miss you. So, we love you. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just wherever the, the students are right now, you will lift them up. Let them know your presence is there. And Lord, let them walk strongly because they are your children and you love them so much. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you guys later. Love you. Thanks for listening.